Welcome back to the studio. I'm a day late, but I am going to get to the uh, Warmest Wishes Flamingo. Um, I had a little bit of, uh, well, I've had two struggles with this. Uh, I had two designs that I really liked. They're both uh, the same base design. They're both called, um, what are they called? Snowflake Flurry. One of them is a border element. It's only three and a quarter inches high. And the other one is a, a meandering panto. And the reason that I like them is as this is a flamingo and it is also a winter pattern, uh, it's kind of a combination, a juxtaposition of both tropical and northern winter designs. And so is this panto in my mind anyway. The snowflake also kind of looks like a starfish to me. So I really liked the design in and of itself. It also has a funny curl in it that is very reminiscent of the inner and outer border fabric that I used. So I will show you both. Um, I'm going to map out the uh, design on the IntelliQuilter so you can see it um, and let you see the design. One of the design will have probably like 27 rows because it's only like three and a quarter inches high. It was intended as a border. And it's the one that I kind of liked the most. The other one, because it's a big meandering panto, it really only has like three or four repeats. And um, I just don't know which one I'm gonna choose yet. So that was conundrum number one. Conundrum number two, um, if, if you've watched many of my videos, you know that I always lean towards choosing a thread that is uh, very low contrast. Um, I don't like in-your-face quilting uh, thread. Uh, I like the quilting to be like uh, perfume or cologne. I think that you shouldn't be aware of it until you become into the proximity of the piece of art or the person. You shouldn't get smacked in the face with it as soon as you walk in the room. That's my personal opinion on perfume and quilting. But Flamingo, I think, is a little bit different. They're ostentatious, they're bright, and so I keep leaning towards using a little bit brighter, stronger thread color than I normally would choose. So um, I had three different shades of pink on the quilt top, a very light one, which was almost uh, red as a cream, and I eliminated that one because it read as a cream color. And then I had a medium color that really was still a little milk toast. And I found, uh, finally loaded one that is a hot pink. It's almost the same color as the Flamingo itself. Um, I'm, it's a, out of my comfort zone, but I really feel like I have to do it. I feel like I have to push myself to try it. Uh, so that's a decision that I am not totally comfortable with yet, but I am gonna do it, it's a decision made. But the other part of that process, the two different designs I will show you. I wanna show you on paper, up on the presentation table first, and then I will show you on the IntelliQuilter, and then I'll get stitching. I will tell you that either way, the total stitching time is almost identical because of the size of the quilt. It's only about 29 minutes of stitching time for me in the studio. Uh, that doesn't include roll-ups or any uh, problems that I may have, um, thread breaks or anything. That's just the actual stitch out time. But they're almost identical in that, twenty about 29 minutes either way. So I'm gonna pull the camera in so you can see that. Then I'll switch the camera positions and we'll load both designs and I'll have to make the tough decision as you are not here with me to help make it. I got both of these designs. Again, I like this curl element that is represented in both of the designs. I like this because it brought out the uh, design in the fabric that is in the inner and outer border. Also, this is the snowflake, but also this reminded me of the starfish. So I like that this had uh, 
elements of both winter and tropical just the way that the flamingo did so I liked both of those they're both part of the same design series the snowflake flurry and so both of them would work well this particular one is only three and a quarter and so this one would fit some I don't know I didn't count but maybe 15 or 18 repeats but I'd still be able to sew as many per row it, it would just sew back and forth before I'd have to roll up so the roll ups will be about the same on this particular one it's 11 and a half inches so I'd uh, will only have uh, you know maybe three or four roll ups on this I think I only have four roll ups or four roll, uh, rows on this when it gets on the machine. Um, the only thing that's a little bit different, they both have about 30 minutes, uh, but the density is obviously different. The density on here is about 1.8 uh, or 1.9, and over here it's about 1.3. And so that may be a deciding factor for me. So we're going to go ahead and load both so you can see them, what they look like on the machine. It will be very similar to this, and, uh, but you'll be able to see how many rows will finish out, and then I'll have to make that decision. So I have my, the head of my machine pulled up to the front of the bar, which is not where I would program a design but it does make it easier to film. So this is just for filming purposes. I could not do this for uh, actual getting the machine ready because it wouldn't stitch out. Uh, but for visual, it's up here for ease of, of taping. So I'll design sew quilt, start new, work in progress. Do I want to replace it? Yes, erase, reset. It's going to be a pantograph in a rectangle manually. I've already entered the dimensions, so my width is going to be 30, enter. The height is 47, enter. Continue and finished. So I'm going to go to S. I'll do this one first, the Snowflake Flurry Border. And it comes up nice and big on here. The height is 12 inches, which is not what it's supposed to be. So the gap is fine. I'm going to bring the row height back down to three and a quarter the way it's supposed to be. So even if I bring it down to like three and a half, you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, about 14 rows. <clears throat> the density is 1.81. And um, if I hit finished, accept, and uh, sew quilt, if I go ahead and do my panto sequencing, just to give you the time. You can see our time is 33 minutes. <clears throat> so that's what it would look like. You can see it's fairly dense. So if I go back to the beginning, design so, start new. We're going to do a pantograph. And again, my dimensions are going to be the same. Finished. S. This time we're doing the meandering panto of the same name. And you have the four. This one, I'm going to nest it a little bit closer. And we're going to change our height back. I'm going to see what was the height again 11 and a half so we'll get this back to about 11 and a half and you can see we have four and a half rows Thank you. 
and this one's 28.2 minutes. So this one, the density is a lot more open. Um, I originally, I was going, I was really thinking I was going to do the smaller border one, but I think just because this is a little bit more open, I think I'm going to go with this one. And so I'm going to move the head of the machine to the upper left hand corner where it needs to be for programming. Um, I'm going to go ahead and use my hot pink thread, which uh, you'll see in just a second. I also have to baste the quilt down um, the top and edges. But aside from that, I have everything in position to start quilting. So I'm going to go ahead and do those things and then we'll hit start. You won't need to see me uh, reload the design because you've already seen me do that. But once I get it done, I will let you see the uh, design start stitching out. And just like that, it's finished. This one, what did we say? It had four or five rows. And today was a good day. I'm happy with both of the choices. It's a funny thing. I know this was designed to be snowflakes, but I think anybody that looked at it would say that those were, uh, oh gosh, what did I say they were earlier? S starfish. They look like starfish. Of course they're designed to be snowflakes, but that's what I liked about it. The little curly cues match the design in the fabric and the starfish snowflakes pick up the uh, juxtaposition of the tropical flamingo and the Christmas theme. So I like that. Uh, the pink, hot pink thread I thought worked pretty good. I'm really, really happy and surprised. It, the dark border seemed to hold its own with that hot pink thread so I really like the way that worked out and the design both front and back I think that worked really well too so this is another one finished I've got some threads to pick off I always do the studio is always a little linty mess but this is another one for the books uh, it only took two days really to get this uh, done 
I had the border put on before we started with the fusing and then it only took a day to get uh, the quilting done. So this was a one-two punch and then I just had my friend do the uh, binding. Once I get that made, she'll whip it down for me and we can have this hanging in the studio. So thanks for stopping by the studio today. We look forward to seeing you again next time where what will we be doing? No telling. Uh, until then, take care of yourself and take care of each other.